Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another edition of Sh- <laughs> Selzy Says. I'm Joe Costello, and we're here with the four-time NHRA champ, Gary Selzy. Gary, welcome back. Joe, great to be here. Oh, the high technology. We've got the Skype line working. This segment is taking off, taking off like the Lucas Oil Nationals. What a great event in Brainerd. You know, it was, and i got to tell you, you know, a couple weeks ago, I had a pretty big bitch and rant about how the track was prepared in Seattle and what a place that was. And my hat's got to go off to NHRA and the safety safari and the the track prep and the racers. I know the first session of qualifying, there was a lot of tire smoke, but I think the track was green and the guys were kind of to get their feel on everything, get their footing. But, man, did it come around. Uh, You could win in either lane. Uh, They ran good numbers. The racing was exciting, and uh, I really enjoyed the show. Absolutely. It was great fun, and it looked like all those crazies out in the zoo were having a heck of a time as well. No doubt about it. (laughs) Those people in Brainerd, like I said, they are off their rocker. They are drag race people. They love that zoo, and they love their racing. And uh, and believe me, they know their stats. They'll read it off to you. So I'm glad no one got hurt on the rickshaw, and uh, (laughs) it looks like everybody survived. At least they haven't found the bodies if anybody's missing. So this week, I think something we all would really like to see is the sport of drag racing to grow and basically increase awareness among those who have never heard of the sport. Gary, I don't know about you, but in my experience, I have never brought someone to the racetrack that was unaware of drag racing that walked away saying, eh, I didn't really like it. They all love it. The question is, can we make people aware of it? So today, I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the activation we've been seeing out there, commercials and Basically, how can we get drag racing out there more? Well, I got to tell you, this is one thing that that I feel is so important. And I think it's very important for NHRA to pay attention to. Now, we've got Napa, who spends millions of dollars on advertising. And they use their race teams. They use their NASCAR teams. And they use their drag race team with Ron Caps. And they've made Ron Caps almost a household name. You know, Castrol is finally using John Force. Thank God for that. You know, John, he's he's the ambassador. He's our... He's a, a never-tire workhorse for promoting drag racing and promoting his sponsors. I mean, if you don't know he drives the Ford Castro Mustang, you've got to be brain dead, which I thank Castro for finally coming alive and doing this thing. I don't know what this thing's going to be at the Winter Nationals to be part of this team, but I think it's great. I think it's a huge thing that they're doing. You know, tire, uh, Service Central Tire, I don't know if it's a local commercial uh, like we had talked earlier, but, you know, they use their race car in that thing. Jack Beckman and Valvoline. Valvoline. Valvoline's always been a big advocate of their racing empires. Now, the one thing that I'd like to see is them to do this on during a baseball game or a football game or even a tennis match. You know, we know the drag race gearheads and, and the people that like racing. Most of them all know about drag racing. But we got to get that guy or, or that woman that's sitting there and they see pretty Ron Capps doing his Napa commercial, doing his little dance. Um, you know, so, oh, he's kind of cute. I want to watch drag racing. Or they show the flame coming out of these cars. You know, we have got a great sport, and and that's the one thing. You know, if we had a crummy product, you you can't sell it. My my dad used to say, and I I know we can edit this, right, Joe? Sure. Um, Free is still So (laughs) we don't have a crummy product. We've got a great product. So we've got to get people that have never seen it or or haven't been interested, and and what better way to do it with a commercial? I mean, Casey Kane with those Allstate commercials when he would run, you know, people would run into polls and things like that when the women are looking at Casey Kane. Those are all great shticks that that work great, and, and, you know, we've got Beckman, we've got Caps, we've got, you know, we've got a lot of personalities. If we could get some of these companies that spend money anyway to use drag racing and use it off of the drag racing schedule, on time, I think that's going to help build our sport. Now, it's a small part, but you know what? Maybe NHRA can say, hey, at our, our own tracks like Indy and Atlanta, uh, Pomona, we'll give you some extra signage and do some other things. You know, I know money's tight, but there's got to be some way that we can put our heads together. I know we've got a lot of smart people out there in marketing to come up with some kind of a deal to give these sponsors something back for free for doing that, encouraging them, you know, and helping the pop- popularity of their driving, their merchandise, and our sport. It's almost as if we've been preaching to the choir. We already know we love drag racing. It's great to see Ron up there. By the way, two weeks in a row, Gary, you talked about how cute Ron was. Just pointing that out. No, <laughs> nothing to it. I got a pattern developing, Joe. It is, it is developing. We'll see how it goes in the future. But it's true. NASCAR has 
made a, a pattern. We've seen the model, the cardboard cutouts in every grocery store. Basically, they're drivers everywhere, and it's almost as if you can't help but know who they are, regardless of what your favorite sport is. We definitely need to see more of that in the NHRA. You know, Joe, the Army is another thing. They spend millions and millions, probably hundreds of millions of dollars in recruiting. And obviously, what better person than Tony Schumacher? I mean, that guy fits the Army mold like nobody's business. But, you know, the Army spends a lot of money. I know it's working for recruiting. If they could do a commercial with him with the Army Top Fuel Dragster accelerating and doing different things, Army of One or whatever they've got now uh, for, for their, their saying, and put it on some primetime stuff. Like I said, football, baseball, even a soapbox or a movie or something. I mean, let's get a different audience than what we've got. Let's let's get some intrigue. Let's do it. The money's being spent already, so it can't hurt. And it's obviously they're going to stay with the army for or with drag racing for a long time. I hope he's definitely done a great job. Um, and, and what more to be proud of than a seven-time world champion? And again, hey, Tony and I aren't the best of friends. I'm just saying what's good for the sport. Let's do it. He fits the bill. He works well. Let's do it. Let, let's find something. Let's get these people that sponsor drag racing, and let's push it. Absolutely. And the fans, they know that the best thing that they can do is buy the products and use the items of the people that go the extra mile, like you're saying. No question about it. We just Hopefully we get somebody to listen to us, Joe. Maybe NHRA will actually listen in. I'm sure uh, I, I wasn't one of the highest in the popularity in their, uh, you know, in their fan list because uh, I like to buck the system a lot and had a lot of arguments. But maybe they'll listen and maybe they'll take heed to this and, uh, and do something to help grow this sport because God knows we all love it. Absolutely. That is a fact. He's Gary Selzy, a four-time NHRA champ. And this is the sh- <laughs> Selzy says. Gary, before we let you go, the big go. It is next. The U.S. Nationals, the granddaddy of them all. No doubt about it. It's going to be big. It's the last race before the countdown. So if anybody's got an outside shot, it's got to be there. You know, Joe, I was fortunate in 1986 to be runner-up in my alcohol dragster. In fact, I was runner-up and didn't win it, and that's what made me sell everything and become a higher driver. I was broke. But I won that race in uh, 1998, and Steve Evans was there, and the battery went dead in my interview. And if I could ever get one race or give up two races to have one back, it was that one. I raced Mike Dunn in the final. We both smoked the tires, and I outpedaled him, and, and that's hard to do because Mike Dunn's a great driver. But that race meant so much to me, winning it and not being able to get an interview has scarred me for life. I still got to go back to therapy. But it's the U.S. Nationals. It's got a lot of prestige. It's, uh, it means a lot. It's made or break people's careers. Um, and the history that goes back there is I, I can't wait to watch it on television. I'm sure ESPN is going to do a great job with that one because there's a lot of stories to be told. That's a nightmare story, Gary. The battery went dead. The battery went dead. I, and it was, you know, it was one of those deals where I knew I was beat. It smoked the tires right at the hit. I saw Dunn go up and smoke and I grabbed the brake and pedal it and, and we beat him. I don't know what happened to Mike. I think the belt came off. Uh, and I got to Evans. I said, you better be ready for me now. And I started to go off and the damn battery was dead in the camera. And by the time they got it, we were out of time, and uh, I never got my interview. So, And it does. It pisses me off to this day. But I do have a uh, – in my office, um, when we get this Skype thing squared away with the camera, I'll, I'll give you a virtual reality tour of my office. I've got uh, 43 national event trophies here and some world championship trophies, and I've got the U.S. national one here, and that's one that I'm most proud of. We're like NASA over here with stuff sells. He says uh, getting – more and more technically advanced every week. I cannot wait. Gary, thank you very much. Great job. And I think all of the NHRA fans out there can do a little something by either supporting the sponsors that support the sport or by writing a letter. Nothing goes further than writing a letter and sending it off saying, hey, this is the sport that I love and I'd like to see more of it in various locations. And I think it can all start right here. Gary, thank you so much once again. Joe, let Selzy do the bitching, and you fans out there, you do the praising and push these sponsors. I'll do the bitching, though. Let me be the bad guy. He's Gary Selzy, a four-time champ, and this is the <laughs> Selzy Says. We'll see you next time.